Let's create the proverbial crawling worm in a minimalistic style using Moho 12 Pro. Start by renaming the default vector layer to Worm. The worm will be defined by only a stroke, so let's change only the stroke color. Make sure it's totally opaque and click OK. From the Effect drop-down for the stroke, choose Shaded and then make these adjustments. From the color display, choose a dark green color and make it semi-opaque. Select the Freehand tool, only enabling Auto Stroke. From the Freehand tool drop-down menu, set the smoothing to this setting and set this to 1. Set the size of the brush by holding down the Alt key and dragging in the view. Then draw out a simple line. Notice the automatic shading effect. Zoom in on the worm and then choose the Translate Points tool. Hold down the A key to add more points in between the existing ones. Now let's set the style for the eyeballs. Click on the Fill Color Swatch and set it to a light tan, totally opaque. Set the stroke color to a very dark green, totally opaque. Select the Draw Shape tool with these settings and the Oval option. Make sure the stroke style is set to plain, and let's set the fill style to a pale tan. Let's also give it a shaded effect with these settings. Changing our mind, let's reset the stroke color to a dark brown, making it totally opaque. With the Draw Shape tool, Draw out an oval just above the worm body, the stroke width setting being 1.5. The shading isn't strong enough, so let's readjust that with these settings. These new settings won't take effect for the eyeball until we fill it with the Paint Bucket tool. Select the Transform Points tool or press T on your keyboard. Then click inside the shape, copying the oval with Ctrl C and then pasting it with Ctrl V. Transform the second oval to make it larger. Now set a new fill color to totally black to draw the pupils. The order of drawing indicates the stacking order of the shapes. The last shape drawn is the one on top. Choose the Select Points tool to lasso both eyeballs and pupils. Then in the layer panel, Make a new bone layer, labeling it Bone. Press A on your keyboard or select the Add Bone tool. Click in the center of the worm body. Select the worm layer and set the origin of the layer in the center of the worm. Then use the Layer Transform tool to scale the worm down. The worm drawing now fits the bone size. Press A on your keyboard to add the rest of the pin bones. Click and drag on the worm layer, placing it as a child of the bone layer. With the last pin bone selected, as well as all the points comprising the eyeballs, press return on your keyboard. This makes the eyes a child of the last bone. Having selected all the pin bones, adjust the influence with the bone strength tool. Then, with the transform points tool, lower the eyes into the body of the worm. With the bone layer selected, set the layer origin point to the tail of the worm and then scale the worm down and move him to this location. Deselect all the pin bones and then move to frame 1 on the timeline. Hold down the T key and then try adjusting one of the bones. Move the time slider to frame 24 and adjust the arching shape of the worm. Once you're finished with the adjustment, press Ctrl R or Command R to render a sample. Move the time slider to frame 35. Then select the first keyframes, copy them with Ctrl C, then use Ctrl V to paste them on frame 35. Enable the onion skins and then drag this onion skin to frame 24. With all the bones selected, hold down the Shift key 
to drag the worm body perfectly aligned to the end of the onion skin. This comprises the advancing of the worm as he crawls. Only these three sets of keyframes are needed to compose the complete crawl cycle. Pan the view of the timeline by holding down the right mouse button and dragging. Extend the frame range by option right clicking on the frame. Select the last set of keyframes, then right click and set a cycle that's additive in nature. The bone paths indicate a good cycle. Uncheck this box to hide the point display. Then press play in the playback controls to see your animation in real time. He's slow, but he's steady. Although our worm cycle is set to advance throughout all the frames of the existing animation, we can make the eyes behave in a totally independent manner. Select the worm layer and zoom in on the eyes. Having all the points selected, use the Transform Points tool to squash and stretch the eyes like this. Then click in the middle of each pupil and transform them into place. Holding down the Shift key, select all the parts of both eyes and drag them forward. This causes the expression of the worm to change from tranquil to intense as he moves from the flat to the arched position. Copy and paste the first keyframes to this new worm position. Copy and then paste the intense looking eyes into this position. Press G on your keyboard or choose the Select Points tool from the tool panel. To select all the points of the eyes, then hold down the T key to translate the eyes. Squash the eyes flat to create the blinking position. Temporarily hold down the C key to adjust the curvature of the eyes. When you're done with this action, you can release the C key and return to the Transform Points tool automatically. The blink needs to start with fully open eyes quickly progressing to fully closed, and then back to fully open again. We'll do this with copy and paste. Use the time slider to check the result. We'll continually be using copy and paste to create the eye positions that we already have. Recognizing keyframe clusters such as Blink allows us to copy and paste these clusters as a group. Having copy and pasted the intense looking eyes to this frame location, we'll use this as a base to create a rolling eye motion. Using the Transform Points tool, adjust each eyeball to be approximately the same size. Then click in the middle of each pupil and move them into this position, resizing them to be equal. Advance a few frames and then move the pupils like this. Advance a few more frames and then move the pupils here. Copy and paste the intense worm eyes to this frame position. Then as the worm flattens out, copy and paste the wide open eyes here. Scroll the time slider so that you can see the worm's performance as we have it so far. Copy and paste this blinking block to the new frame location here. Then copy and paste the intense worm eyes here. We'll continue copy and pasting existing frames and blocks of frames until we get to the end of the animation.
Then, right at the very end, we'll add this little variation with the eyes. Now let's set the final rendering options from the File menu. Go to File, Project Settings, and make these changes. Then from the File menu, select Export Animation, and make these changes. You can watch the dramatic rendering display until the animation's finished. Then, play it back in your favorite player to see the final product. In the next video, we'll cause the worm to change his mind right in midstream.